gonna be the day that you gotta go fucking vegan. By now you should have somehow figured out you gotta go fucking vegan. Well, I don't believe anybody feels the way I do about you now. to talk about hydration and how important hydration is and how, how it can be neglected because it's so simple yet so big. We're going to talk about how do you know you get you're hydrated, what's the best water to drink, when's the best time to drink, water for weight loss, water for better skin, water for better <laughs> digestion, water for better energy, things like that. Hydration is like so I would say hydration is the main, the main foundation for a lot of things. Because if we all jumped on our bikes now and went for a ride, the bi most biggest limiting factor would be our hydration levels. We just did a 30 mile ride just then, and it rained on us, which is cool. But what we would have ran out first is water, hydration. Dehydration is your quickest way to overtrain. And many people go, well, I don't really do much sport, so that doesn't apply to me. But if you're using your brain, you can overtrain. If you're using your body, looking after your kids, you can overtrain. You can lose your mood. Because as soon as you get dehydrated, you start getting snappy, frustrated, you don't digest food well, you get bloating, you just can't sleep properly, you get all you know, cranky, regardless if you're an athlete or not. Like I said yesterday, life is sport. We're all athletes in this game of life. So does anyone, I, anyone have any idea how much water you need to drink a day? Like what's the, what's the way to tell you're drinking enough water? Peace and clear. Oh yeah. Definitely. Definitely. That's the, that's the best way to tell. Clear and frequent urination. At least 10 times a day. At least 10 times a day. Every year, two hours, you should be watering, watering the garden at least. And at night time, you know, have like a water bottle and fill it up. We into that. Like I said yesterday, don't knock it over on the carpet. <laughs> and that way you're getting enough hydration. Otherwise, I've got friends who don't drink water at all. Don't drink, don't touch water. And their health is just like, just failing. They're dehydrated, they're just like, they're really bad posture because they're so fatigued. It's like, oh man, you know. They're constantly having to like, try new things in their lifestyle because they're just failing to hydrate. They're not hydrating properly, so they feel bad and they think, oh, it can't be the water because water's too simple. Water's too simple. It must be something more complex. It must be my spiritualness. It must be my food, it must be my partner, it must be some other thing. It can't be water, because water's like, water's easy, man. You get water for free. But water's like the foundation upon everything. That's how I got into this lifestyle. I was doing martial arts, and my karate teacher said, Harley, when you learn to drink enough water, <laughs> you, you, you just, you know, you'll feel so much better. You'll, you'll perform better, you'll think better, everything will be better. I'm like, dude, I've been drinking water for my, whole, my whole life. How do I know I drink enough water? It says your urine will go clear. If, you, if your urine is yellow or straw, you need to drink more. I'm like, that's, that's rubbish, man, because I've been wearing pissing yellow and straw my whole life. So, and I'm, I think I was 21 or 20 back then. I'm, I'm, I'm doing right, I'm fit, doing karate, it's all good. It's like, you can go to the next level when you're hydrated. I'm like, oh, cool, I can dig that. So I started drinking water that day, and I kept, you know, going to the toilet. I'm like, what colour's my urine? I was yellow, I can need to drink more. And then it started going clear consistently. I just started feeling so much better. And then I'd forget to drink enough water, I'd get cranky, I'd, you know, my digestion wasn't good, I'd be like, you know, just, just not feeling good. And I'd go, well, I haven't, haven't, haven't had a piss for a while, I haven't gone to the toilet for a while, what's going on, you know? And then when I'd go, it'd be like yellow or dark yellow or getting not close to orange when I was really cranky. And it's like, boom. So, I learned from a martial arts teacher about clear urination. should always be clear. Always. If it's yellow or straw, drink more. 100%. Simple as that. And it's, uh, we'll get to questions in a second. I'll just quickly rant for a bit and then we'll go Q&A on hydration because that way I answer people's questions rather than people leaving here and go, but what about this, what about that? So just give me a couple of minutes. I'll share my story. So that was, and then I got into it. And then I would experiment. You know, I go, okay, well, I'll just, won't drink water and, I'll see how we go. And then I got into raw foods and I'm like, well, I get enough water from fruit, yeah? I'm weighing a lot. 
and I did periods where I wouldn't drink water. My performance, my mood, my digestion would just go down. And then my fruitarian friends who wouldn't drink water, who aren't fruitarian or raw food anymore at all, they'd, some of them actually, one of them's dead, they would be, just be like, just flailing, just be like, you know, like, oh, you know, like, I'm like raw fooder, and it's like, man, you eat like crap, and you perform like crap, and you're a bad message for the movement, because you're dehydrated, because you're just so, you know, thinking, I've got to be right, I've got to be right, water's bad. They're not willing to try new things, have an open mind, and go, actually, all the animals on the planet drink water, and water makes sense, and, you know, 70, 80% of our body's water, pure water, and when you drink watermelon, eat watermelon or oranges, your body has to convert that fruit into water first before it can be utilized. It's like trying to wash dishes with orange juice. You can do it, but they're not going to be clean dishes. So if you want to have water for your body, water for your cells, the cells don't need orange juice, they need water. And your body can extract water from your fruit, but it prefers pure water. So it can just uptake it versus going, oh, we need water, but now we have to digest the orange juice, pull out the water, and then send it to the cells. When you have water, it just goes in the stomach, boom, cells dispersed. It's like having mud on your money. People pay you with $150 bills, but it's covered in mud. It's cool, you can still use that, but it's better to have clean money, so you have to spend less time cleaning your money before you can use it. Drinking water instead of having fruit juice for hydration is better, as your body can just uptake it straight away. So that's just a little bit of story about hydration, just to set the stage, and next Q&A. Any questions about hydration? Eric? Yeah, it's, uh, I've, seen, I've seen monkeys drink water in, in Penang, in Malaysia, but they don't drink a lot of water. But what happens is they're in the rainforest, they're always getting rained on. Before in our bike ride, I was, we were demonstrating that, all of a sudden it started raining, and everyone's, uh, after a while, started to go to the toilet. Well, I, I had to go to the toilet more, because the rain's coming on, your body's soaking up the water, you've got to pass more water. I was of the belief once that Primates, bonobos, don't drink a lot of water, which is true, but they will drink water. They're also in the rainforest, which is rain, uh, rain forest. It's raining every single day. At night time, it's often raining the whole night, and they're cuddled up in their nest, water's dripping through, soaking on their skin, being absorbed. We're similar to bonobos, but we wear clothing. When it rains, we're in shelter, we're in air conditioning, we turn the heater on, and we turn the aircon on. We're drying ourselves out constantly, we're talking a lot. We might be riding our bikes, or driving in a car or being an air-conditioned train, so we're constantly losing a lot of water. And if we don't replace that, it's just like, vitality just goes down, digestion goes down. So to use the, pardon? Yeah, oh, yeah if you go to like, if you watch cows and stuff like that, or horses, you always stay, if you stand there, you'll see, it. there'll be someone pissing every few minutes. You go, oh, over there, and then you wait for, here we go. They're always, you know, crapping, eating, and pissing. Or, or sleeping. It's incredible. I hope people don't mind my French language. Be honest. Um, I'm curious, like, let's say I, I just finished a jury and yep. I go to the bathroom and I notice my shirt is yellow. Um, you need to drink more water, yeah. And, well, I need to drink more water. Before you add the durian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do I drink water then? Yeah, you can just drink it, man. I mean, it's better to have it before, but hey, it's, you know, it's, just to drink it is more important. What's, no, just drink it. Get in there, because your body needs water. Because it's, it's telling you, hey, yellow. In nature, we have the, the signal, red is danger. In Australia, you have the red-backed spider, very to toxic, the red-backed belly black snake, very toxic. A lot of the poison arrow frogs in the Amazon are red. Red is like a, a danger signal. A lot of red berries will kill you. The red mushrooms will kill you, like the fly agar. You eat that, you're dead. It's red. Red's a, a danger color. So what we start off is yellow urine, and then orange urine, and eventually red urine when you, you, you can see blood, the kidneys are coming down. Okay. So if you, the secret of eating durian, I learned this in Thailand, if you don't drink enough water when you're in Thailand, you, you quickly notice it in a few days, because it's so hot there, it's humid, and you're eating a durian, which is really heavy in the calories. The higher calorie of the fruit, the more water you need before you eat that fruit to digest it. So durian's like a teacher. Some people say that durian's like the shape of the Buddha's head. Because if you go to Thailand or China or Singapore or wherever, where they have Buddha statues, it's like the shape of the Buddha's head, all these little spikes. And I thought, oh, that's not very scientific, but maybe there's some, some you know, validity in that. So we've got the, uh, <laughs> the durian's like a teacher. It tells you to keep your fat intake pretty low. It tells you to be about hydration. It tells you about eating you know, early in the evening. It tells you about food combinations, things like that. So durian's like a little teacher there. 
So definitely if you eat durian and your urine is yellow afterwards, then you need to drink more water beforehand. So next time go, okay, I'm gonna have durian for lit, uh, lunch or dinner. I'm gonna drink a quart or two quarts of water beforehand, beforehand. And you can have it an hour beforehand, you can have it half an hour beforehand, you can have 10 minutes beforehand. It doesn't really matter too much as long as you get the water in and then you have your durian on top. First thing I told people today after the bike ride, drink a quart of water and then start your fruit meal. Having your fruit first and then drinking water, it's okay, but your body wants water to get set up digestion, get all your stomach acids going and everything, you know, flowing versus eating and then having water on top doesn't feel as good. It's okay, but the best scenario is water first, then food. Even if I'm having watermelon for breakfast, I'll have water first. Drink a quart of water. Every day I start the day with a quart of water. Regardless of having coconut juice for breakfast, I'll start the day with a quart of water. Makes things so much better. Digestion, feelings of well-being, mindset. It's, it's, it's incredible. You're probably drinking, I mean, drinking three quarts of water in the morning before anything is probably a bit excessive. Okay. You, you just have to start with a quart and go from there. Okay. I, there's no need to drink like three quarts before you start training. All right. It's... A quart's enough, and then you can drink. You can carry water on your bike, and then drink. You can drink your three quarts during training if you need to. If it's that hot, yeah. a quart an hour is all you need, really. Okay. You know, drinking more than a quart in an hour, the body's not really going to absorb it, and it might just slosh around a bit too much. It's like trying to breathe in too fast, too rapidly. Like <gasps> it's, we've got a set limit how much we can breathe in, and to do more than that, it's going to hyperventilate. I'm feeling dizzy now. <laughs> But with water, drinking three quarts in one hit is, is, is totally pointless because the body can't absorb three quarts in one hit. A quart is fine. A quart per hour is all you need to drink. More than that, it's just going to slosh around and make you feel not so well. So a quart per hour is maximum. The body can still absorb that fresh water. The salt gets blocked off, but it absorbs a bit of fresh water, definitely. I find. That's why like, when you go surf and you start urinating a lot, it's like, hey, I'm, I'm, you know, whatever, what's going on here? Or if you go swimming in a, a lake, you can hydrate up. I personally, I like the fresh water because it feels better on your skin. You get out of the ocean, you feel, start to feel a bit scratchy and itchy and you've got to have a shower in fresh water to wash off the salt. That's my experience. I like swimming in fresh water better, but I'll swim in both. You can actually, if you get a dehydrated person and dunk them in the fresh water or a bathtub, their skin will absorb a lot of water. Their body will start to rehydrate a bit. So it's very effective in situations where the person's got heat stroke where they can't even drink because they're so like out of it. If you just dunk them or put them in a cool shower, not too cold, you don't want to shock them, you just want to have it cool, and they can start to rehydrate. I've done that before on bike rides where I've totally run out of water, totally unorganised, gotten thirsty, which you should never be thirsty. If you're thirsty, you waited too long. So I'm thirsty, I'm just like parched, I'm just like water, water, water. I get to this place called Fruit Bat Falls where it's pristine water. I'm diving in, I'm actually drinking the water as I'm swimming around. This is an awesome experience. I was just like, ah. Oh, water <laughs> and all of a sudden your, your mentality just changes in 10 seconds because your body's going okay we've got what we need now we can stop stressing out so when you're busting go to the toilet oh, i gotta go i gotta go you, you can't be happy you can't be having much gratitude because you, your body's going we need to evacuate we need to get get, get rid of something and it's just you, you can't focus you can't concentrate that's why i say go go to the toilet before you do anything so you can focus same with hydration water and sugar and sleep does that, that, so is, is that answer your question i mean Sort of a question, obviously. Really, you can, what, you know, what? <laughs> that bike ride took it out of me. Basically, your question was about the, the salt water or fresh water. Yeah, but you, your, body, that's okay, so your body will not absorb the salt from the sea. If it did, you'd, you'd be dead. Because your sodium levels just go right up and, you, and you'd die. But you can. Yeah. Yeah, you go. You stand there long enough, you start getting the prune fingers. So salt water, if you, if, if you could absorb that much salt from the ocean, then you'd, you'd quickly die. But your skin's pretty smart, it blocks it out. For sure. I drink the best water I can get in the moment. If I was in Central Park the other day doing a 100 mile bike ride in Central Park, ran out of water, and so I, just, I just filled up at the uh, little public, pub, sorry, public waterfall fountain. Chlorinated, fluidated water. It smelled like chlorine, I'm like, woof. So I just, I just sat there for a few minutes and the chlorine starts to evaporate, that's a tip. Chlorine evaporates if you just leave it in a jar or your bottle, it will evaporate out most of it. And then once it didn't smell too bad, I just drank it. If I really needed water, I would just drank it anyway. But it's better to have the best, any water is the best water. The best water is the best, wa the, the best water is the water you need in the moment. That's the best water. And then the best is like spring water from your hands in the top of some French Alp or Pyrenees purity, just come out of the spring. You're the first person to touch it. 
That's the best water. Obviously, it's not realistic. It's not the dates in my pocket. The best date is the date you pick off the tree. It's perfectly hydrated. It's just, you know, like sun energy just straight into that, you know, almost or whatever. That's the best date, but we don't live in that sort of world. Mm-hmm. Drink the one you like the best. Buy the one you like the best. Buy the, the flavor of water you like the best. Then you drink the most of it and you stay hydrated. It's not a concern. It's buying something you don't like the taste of, it's like saying you should eat this fruit even though your favorite fruit's that one. It's like you're not going to eat much of it. You're going to get under carb. You're going to starve. You're going to hate it. You're going to be binging. You don't have enough energy to live your lifestyle. So same with water. Drink the water you like the taste of. And if you can't get it, just drink anything. Does that answer your question? The main thing is hydration. Ten times a day urination. That's the situation we want to be in. If we, like my friend who died two years ago, she's like, no, I can't drink that water because that's not pure enough. I'm pure, I'm pure being. And she died doing water fast. <laughs> You shouldn't die when you're doing a water fast. You shouldn't die being a raw fooder. Yeah, you, if you die eating healthily, you, you're doing it wrong. And I hate to make light of it, but it's, it's crazy. And people said, you don't need to drink much water. You know, you're raw fooders. You don't drink water. Yeah, actually, you actually don't need to drink water at all. And you shouldn't go wee at night time or whatever. And my friend followed this sort of advice, and, and she's dead. All she needed to do was <laughs> drink some puddle, some muddy puddle, and she'd be alive today. She could have gone outside and, and dr drank the mud water in the, in the garden that had been raining and just drink that or drink the rusty rainwater off the roof and she'd still be alive today. So purity killed her. Obviously not many people die from purity, but a lot of people don't live the full life because their purity consciousness is like, that's bad, I can't do that. And they, they get under carb, they get dehydrated, they get underslept. But I can't sleep in that bed because that bed's like angled not next to the sun, so I'm just going to, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm not going to sleep there. And they run out of sleep, they hate it, or they the water's not good enough for them, they get dehydrated, they hate it, or the food's not perfectly organic or whatever, and they don't eat enough and they hate it. So just drink whatever water you can get, so you can get urinate 10 times a day, clear. Next one. <laughs>